Alrighty, great games at your table. I'm Jonathan Alpin, and this is Nikos RPG. And uh, this is the show Making Believe, where we talk about all things fantasy and fiction and fun. Basically, we're going to be talking about the the challenges that we have in uh, the American culture, at least, and possibly in the global culture, with the uh, dangers of growing up. Uh, as you, <laughs> as you probably remember, when you from when you were a kid, there things were a lot simpler as a child. Now, that's not always the case for everyone, and of course, I can't speak to every condition, but. For the most part, a childhood, it should be at least a time of innocence and wonder and magic and mystery and generally having a having a a challenging life in terms of just simply accepting and understanding and grasping all of the concepts of our lives here on earth. And there are some major benefits of gaining adult consciousness in terms of being able to take care of oneself and that kind of thing. But there's also a, a great sorrow over the things that we sort of lose. And so today we're going to talk about how to reconcile the challenges between being a human being and growing out of the childhood that was our very nature from birth. So as we go through these, I, I hope to share with you some of my inset, my concepts. And if you are uh, willing, I, I'd appreciate it if you would also join into the conversation by adding comments in the chat or even going so far as joining our Discord so that we can have an actual conversation about these, uh, these topics. The, uh, the first one I talk about is the fact that when we become adults, as soon as we start down that path, many, a great many of the fantasies that we had about our adult life are crushed. They're just destroyed. We, we think that when we are on our own, we will be free. And we think we will have uh, everything that we need just will happen because up until that point in life, for the most part, we have received that which we need. That is one of the roles of parenting and leadership that goes into raising human beings. And so as we are rising up through the ranks and, and, and getting older and more sophisticated, even as we have our eyes on what that freedom will entail, the very concepts that, that it's based on are slowly being undermined and chipped away. Pardon me. we necessarily find ourselves having to give up on things that we thought we wanted. You know, we think, well, I'll, I'll be a millionaire by a certain age, or I will be well-placed in business, or I will attain the leadership of my games club or my football team or whatever. And all of these things that seem to be logical to us as children suddenly are, are crushed under the wheels of becoming an adult. And in terms of our worldview, we suddenly see that there are obstacles that we couldn't even have comprehended previously that actually get in the way of our advancement. And all of these crushing blows to our fantasy life tend to downplay or un downgrade our use of them. So what is the point of, of dreaming about a future that we now see we can't accomplish in a straightforward way? We can't just reach out and grab it. And this is a devastating blow to creativity and imagination because you think you're going to be a great painter and then you find out that you don't have the skill or it's going to take a lot of work or you don't have the resources. Uh, I remember when, in my case, growing up, one of the things that I had always, I mean, from a very young age, I really appreciated the sound of the violin. And so I wanted to learn to play the violin. And when 
faced with the reality that a violin was an expensive instrument and that it would be hours upon hours upon hours of dedication and work that I was not going to be supported in because my parents thought it was a waste of time and whatever. There was not going to be any of the easy parts to the process and the economic barrier was simply too high. I wasn't in an economic strata where I could just go out and buy an instrument and neither was I in a place where I was of a low enough income that I would be might be gifted such a thing. So I simply wrote it off. I said, okay, well, violin's not going to be my choice. Ultimately, I did perform in, in band and I learned a lot about music theory, but I learned it at uh, the percussion level because a drum was something my mom and dad could afford. So that gives you an example. These, this, the destruction of fantasies, therefore, cr creates a, almost an intention of putting away that creativity. Not only that, once we get to the point where we can actually go get a job, we find out what it really is to have physical labor, mental labor, actual dedicated drudgery, boring work, and these, these new levels of mind-numbing activities put us in a position where there's, there's really no reason to spend time in creativity. Granted, our minds can go there, but now they are sent in ways that are frivolous because they're, they're wasting time. And technically, if you're on a very dedicated job, you have to use both your mental and physical capacities. And therefore, it literally squeezes the creativity right into the corners, pushes it back away. Now, the human spirit, I would argue, is indomitable. We pretty much keep doing what we decide we want to do. So you can soldier on, you can continue to move through that, but these new vistas of physical and mental labor have just put a huge burden on your time. In addition, we promote team sports, team activities, team teamwork, because it's, again, part of what humans do. And because of that, we downplay or even undermine or eliminate individuality. You know, you go to work for a company, you must wear the uniform. You must uh, meet their standards for haircuts. You must, your, your individuality is pushed down. Now, arguably in today's world, the they, they world pushes back. And in some ways that's a great thing, but in other ways it's, it's almost counterproductive for humanity as a whole. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a war going on constantly between the imaginative mind and the practical mind. Because the practical mind is looking at survival, but you need to put a, head, a roof over your head and food in your face. At the same time, your imaginative mind is trying to maintain your identity and your creativity and your innovation. And those two are constantly at war, but the world doesn't help because the world says, don't be an individual. Because when you're an individual, you are different. And if you are different, you can be targeted. And it, it's literally quelling the human spirit, it's pushing us out of the very space where we arguably do our individual best. Also, as we advance, especially when we are going into the workday world and going around other beings, there are social cues that become more rigidly enforced you're you know yes you have a right to free speech but if you're in the library you have to be quiet you know there are there are social cues that become rigidly enforced which deconforms us from the freestyle existence of childhood where what we're pushed away from the door to the playground the uh one of, uh, recently I did a video on the uh, end of recess, and it really is a bellwether in human development when we stop giving ourselves permission to engage in imaginative and ir sort of irrelevant activity. Because when we stop reaching into the realms of the impossible for things, 
then we suddenly start to draw lines and say things are impossible, even though they were only improbable before. This next one is kind of hard to explain, but the sound of silence is being invoked, and it has been for decades. The idea of a viewpoint that is other than the accepted cultural norm is slowly being pushed out as well, partially for economic basics. Uh, companies and corporations do things to make money, and so if they made a position that, or they took a position that was adversarial to one or more of their constituencies, they're naturally shooting themselves in the foot. And so there is a de facto uh, hush order placed on us as we grow up. In other words, we learn how to walk in a crowd and mind our own business and, and stay straight ahead and don't engage with others. And if we have an opinion that's different from the norm, we hold it back and we scrunch it down. And this forced sound of silence is deafening when your position, your decisions are being questioned because they aren't the same as everybody else. And for no other reason, this is dangerous because our identity is wrapped up in our ability to communicate. We, we are only known to exist because we can speak. Children that have developmental disabilities and have difficulty speaking are perceived of being less at less intelligent as those who learn quickly even who don't have that mental capacity so the ability to communicate becomes important but at the same time it's being pushed down as being you've got to talk the way the, the world talks you've got to speak the words they speak this leads to a gradual push towards conformity. If we are doing what the world says and we are acting the way the world wants, then we're all going to be quantifiable, identifiable, and yet separate. And this is important. They want us to build up the idea of independent thought and crush it at the same time. Our, our desire for preference means there's 20 different kinds of something that we can go get. But nonetheless, it is something that you have to go get. It's a thing that can be purchased. So preference is downplayed, and yet it's vaunted and elevated in the, in the rhetoric because we're talking about how great free choice is and how great your free will is. <coughs> Even as we attempt to cookie cutter everything into boxes that can be defined and therefore get away from the very creativity and innovation that lies within each one of us. And that even leads to the fact that questioning becomes quality. You don't ask a question. Don't, don't. It's always been this way. Don't, don't change it. As a matter of fact, we like it if you do it like everybody else does. So here's, here's what's cool. Here's what's fashionable. Be like everybody else. I remember when I was a young, young dad, young father, my son had come home from school demanding as children will do, to get access to a Nike baseball cap. He wanted a baseball cap that had the Nike logo on it. And he was adamant that he had, he wanted, really wanted it. And I said, why, why do you think you want that hat? And he goes, well, I want to be able to uh, exert and, and, and introduce my, my imagination, my, my identity, my uh, uniqueness to the class. I said, so in, in your classroom, you want to be, you want to stand out and be different? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I said, well, who gave you the idea that, it, that you know, where did the idea that it had to be uh, with that particular marking on the hat? What, 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 what gave you that idea? He says, well, that's because everybody else is doing that. And this is, this is the way children's minds work. He was thinking he was going to become individual by doing exactly what everybody else was doing. So I pointed this out to him, that he wasn't actually being an individual by wearing the exact same kind of hat. Granted, you have a different color and you'd be exerting your preference. 
but you wouldn't be being unique by any stretch because you'd be just like everybody else. He looked back at me with a shock look on his face. He says, you're right, Dad. He says, I, he says, I want you to get me a baseball cap that's got no markings on it. I want to be this color, but I want to have no markings. And I, again, just to reinforce it, I said, why is that? He says, because if I'm just like everybody else, then I can't be an individual. And if I'm going to be an individual, I can't be like everybody else. Mission accomplished. <laughs> for, for me, uh, that was like the crowning moment of my training of a young man to become his own person because he finally got it. And granted, that was, he was still 17 or so, so there's a lot more growing to go. But the point was that he had understood from that moment on that creativity and individualism cannot be following somebody else's trend. It has to be building your own or at least acknowledging where you got it. You know, he always worked to make sure that his vocabulary was up to snuff with everybody else, but always try to find one or more words that he could add into a conversation that would cause people to look at him and go, where did that come from? Because he learned the value of innovation. Now, when question becomes quelled and imitation is encouraged, we end up with a cookie cutter generation that are all being told, you are the same. Is it any wonder we have a dif difficulty in understanding and delineating even the differences between ourselves and our siblings? Uh, our, our brothers and our sisters, we, 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 we are encouraged so much to imitate that we forget how to innovate. And it's, it's a tragedy. And in, in many ways, I feel that the entire mechanism of role-playing games is actually devised and intended as a way to break people out of this mold and get people to think differently. But the key in American culture, and perhaps the Western culture, and perhaps global culture, is that consumerism begins to take over creativity because creativity is creating something that is preferable to a single person, whereas a consumerist project, a, a consumerism item, is going to be appealing to many and therefore drive larger number of sales. So consumerism destroys uh, innovation in terms of cultural value, because it's not at, or not it's not reaching as many people, and I think this all of this pressure, all of these things, from our fantasies being destroyed and individuality being uh, eliminated, our social security forcing us down certain paths, our preferences being downplayed and yet elevated, all of this leads to a calcification of our intent. We no longer want to be ourselves we now just want to be the same or better than others and this calcification this lockstep into what we think we want to be is really really dangerous now as we come to the close of this episode i do want to do want to remind you that there's a role play revolution underway at www.nikosrpg.com the nikos rpg mechanism provides you as a game master the means to develop your own story, your own mechanisms, and yet creates a familiar environment for others to participate in. For more information, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Nikos. And of course, check out our videos over at Nikos RPG on YouTube. Uh, make sure if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, or at least follow this channel, subscribe if you can. If you really like what we're doing, check out the Patreon, as I said. And I will 